Two random examples on uh, simple harmonic motion are uh, the simple pendulum and the physical pendulum. Simple pendulum is an idealization to some uh, physical systems. So uh, it's, it consists of a massless uh, string and a uh, point mass swinging uh, in, under the effect of the gravity. If uh, this pendulum is deflected by an uh, angle theta uh, from uh, its equivalent position, a torque length times mg sine theta restoring torque uh, applies on uh, the pendulum. And now uh, we must construct the uh, torque equation instead of force equation. Uh, this is the net torque and uh, moment of inertia and angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is the second time derivative uh, of the angle theta. Moment of inertia uh, of the simple pendulum is mass times the length uh, of the uh, string uh, squared. Then uh, equation of motion reads this one. Then uh, again, leaving this uh, angular acceleration alone, we have a nonlinear equation. Sine theta is not a uh, is not a linear function of uh, the angle theta, then uh, we must linearize it. Now uh, let's also introduce the physical pendulum. Physical pendulum is any rigid object which is free to rotate about uh, some rotation axis uh, away from its center of mass, Mo moves under the effect of gravity again. A gravity acts a restoring torque as it is deflected by angle theta from its equivalent position. Restoring torque is d times mg sine theta. Again, uh, constructing uh, the torque equation, we have a nonlinear equation in the same form as uh, the simple pendulum. We apply to Maclaren expansion of sine theta. For uh, small angles, when uh, theta is much smaller than unity in, uh, in radians, we may uh, neglect the higher order terms in the expansion, then uh, approximate sine theta to theta. Then uh, we will have linear equations for uh, both the simple and physical pendula. Then uh, again, the, these equations of motions have a solution in this form, taking the derivatives and inserting into equ equation as before, we obtain an angular frequency omega the root squared g over l for the simple pendulum, another uh, angular frequency for the physical pendulum, d times mg over moment of inertia. Energy in simple harmonic motion is a constant. Uh, let's again turn back to our hook and spring mass system. The mechanical energy uh, is the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is due to the motion of uh, the mass, and the potential energy is the stored uh, energy in har harmonic spring. Let's uh, see two limiting cases when uh, the object is passing uh, from its equivalent position at x equals zero. Uh, only we have the kinetic energy. There is no compression or stretch in the, the spring. Then. Uh, we have, we observe the maximum kinetic energy here, or maximum sp uh, speed. At the limit uh, of the motion at the amplitude when x equals a, uh, since the body will momentarily stop in either end, we will have no kinetic energy. Uh, our tot total mechanical energy will be stored in the spring. Then since a is, uh, seen everywhere in the solutions, then I will choose this one as the constant, as the total energy, then insert thing it here. We also can find speed position relation. It may be fruitful. Next, let's uh, introduce two damped oscillations. If I uh, immerse this system altogether into some viscous fluid, you may also pour some uh, viscose fluid on uh, the ground. So 
the object, the, the mass uh, will move under the, some extra force, extra drag force, uh, which is a function of its velocity. For small speeds, uh, that drag force can be taken as approximately proportional to the velocity, of course, in a reverse direction to its motion. Since I, I, we are going to construct a differential equation, I will insert dx over dt, the first time derivative of the displacement instead of v. Then equation of motion then, uh, becomes mass times acceleration equals the net force, force due to the restoring uh, force to, uh, of the sp spring, then uh, drag force. It's a usual habit to take the, this form, uh, setting the first uh, high, highest order uh, derivatives coefficient to unity. So uh, this is our equation of motion. Solution uh, to this equation is threefold for small values of uh, p, namely the drag, say, drag coefficient. We have an oscillatory uh, solution of this form. If p were zero, we would have the same equation as uh, a simple harmonic oscillator. And uh, we would have a solution of the form a times cosine omega t plus phi. But the existence of this uh, drag force affect the angular frequency also since uh, the system will lose its, its energy, and now there's a dissipative force here, uh, uh, we will observe some exponential decay uh, in the amplitude of the motion. Taking the derivatives, first and second derivative, and inserting into the equation of motion, uh, we can uh, solve gamma and omega. Uh, gamma is p over 2m, so that's why I write uh, the equation of motion in this form. See, uh, this is gamma is uh, the damping coefficient, say, is uh, one half of the first derivative's coefficient. Also, angular frequency will be affected by the drag force. Uh, if b were zero, we would have root squared k over m as the angular frequency, but the existence of b, or the drag coefficient, affects the angular, uh, degrades ang the angular uh, frequency somewhat. When uh, b is sufficiently large uh, to make the inside of the root zero, we call it as the critical value of b, at critical b, uh, value of b, omega vanishes, then critical damping occurs. Since angular frequency is zero, there is no more oscillation. Only uh, if omega is zero, cosine phi will uh, multiply the amplitude factor. Then we will observe some exponential decay. If uh, one further increases uh, the b inside uh, of the root will become negative and we will have a complex uh, angular frequency. Complex uh, uh, angular frequency uh, means in the solution hyperbolic functions or uh, physical solution to them will exponential decays, uh, no oscillation. Uh, if b is smaller than the critical value, uh, which we call under damping, we will observe some oscillatory solution. Here are some sketched of, uh, sketch of the displacement time relation. For underdamping, we observe the black curve, some oscillatory behavior, which is under some exponential decaying uh, envelope. And for the overdamping, we observe only exponential decay. Physically, it means the energy stored in the spring is not sufficient to take the mass back to its equilibrium position, only it will approach to its equilibrium position x equals zero, only asymptotically uh, t equals infinity. The same is valid for the critical damping. 
in critical damping, uh, again, there is no uh, oscillatory behavior. It will approach to uh, its equilibrium position, exponent uh, exponential decaying form. Finally, let's uh, introduce the forced oscillations and the resonance. When we uh, take our hook and spring mass system again immersed into some viscous fluid with our drag force, applying some extra driving force F sub d, uh, which is equal to F max times cosine omega d uh, times t. Here is uh, omega d is the angular frequency of the driving force. When we force the system to uh, swing with some driving force frequency, our equation of motion will be in this form. Then we will not solve it, but it's amplitude uh, of our oscillations. Now uh, will be frequency dependent. Driving force uh, frequency, uh, observe that when it's uh, equal to root squared k over m, this term vanishes. So we observe an amplitude uh, maximum. If there is no drag force, it becomes infinite. So it's not physical, of course. When driving uh, frequency is uh, equal to the natural frequency, natural uh, vibrational frequency of our undamped uh, system, root squared k over m, we observe amplitude maximum. We call this uh, interesting phenomenon as the resonance.